Hello there, this is Carlo. Welcome to another quick tip tutorial. Uh, just based around the tutorial I did a little while ago on tracking, text and moving footage. This time I'm going to show you guys how to track an object uh, moving footage. So, um, I've just got simple composition here, very very short uh, piece of footage. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play that back so you can basically just see it. And what that will do is make our timeline green so we can make sure that's rendered um, and it's going to run smoothly as well whilst we do the track. So I'm trying to think of what sort of objects I can sort of place into this scene. Um, so we're just going to basically wing it. Uh, and first of all, let's make sure your render is selected to full um, because we need the best sort of detail we can. And then I'm going to come up to animation um, and I'm going to use track motion um, here. And I want to basically pick the most vibrant part of this object here to track. Um, so I'm just going to have a quick look what we can sort of play around with. This bit looks good here, so I'm just going to get my track. I'm just going to place it over here. I'm going to come down here, select rotation and scale because this footage moves out. Um, I'm just going to bring this over, say, to this dark bit here. Uh, maybe just move it out a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to analyze that forward. And just make sure the tracks um, stay on point. Um, don't know what we're going to add to this footage, um, but we'll find something hopefully which will sit quite nice. Maybe we'll stick something on the top of the rocks there. Um, I'm not sure. But we will give it a go. So, trying to do this in real time, guys, so you can see the best way to do it. The more vibrant the point you place your uh, track points at, the better it's going to track and the smoother it's going to be. Um, and you won't get no sort of movement from these track points here going up and down and all over the place. So try and keep it either dark as you can or keep your points as light as you can. So let that finish in real time. Um, this is not the greatest quality clip ever, it's only a 720p um, piece of footage. Obviously the higher the quality piece of footage you've got, the better track you're going to get because it's going to enable the camera tracker to run a lot more smoother as well. But this seems to be uh, tracking okay. Cross me fingers, we won't get no movements from them track points. Uh, there is a way obviously you can, you know, if you, your track point goes out, you know, you can stop it, move the track point in. It's just basically keyframing. That's all track points are doing, it's just adding a keyframe. So, um, we can play around with that if it goes out of sync, but it seems to be doing not too bad. As it goes. I try and keep whatever I'm tracking on screen as well, make sure it don't go off screen. Um, it just it saves you a lot of hassle. Um, obviously, if you're cutting in between scenes as well, um, try and, for instance, if this is a scene here that you want to track, just this scene, just cut it um, from A to B, whatever it is, the length of the, this scene, and then add it into your uh, uh, film in post-production, so it's all in sequence. So that's nearly done. This is very, very simple process to use within After Effects, so, and it works very, very nicely as well. So we are nearly done with that in real time. And hopefully, crossing my fingers, this is gonna stay where it is as it moves this way and we are going to get no problems so we don't have to sort of play around with it but like I say I mean 90% of the time guys if your points are on a nice piece of track if you've got a nice tracking point then like you've just seen there you're going to get no problems with it uh, tracking so I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to make sure it's selected to select this click OK to that and then I'm just gonna sorry, I'm gonna edit the target. Make sure that's alright. Like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cancel that and we'll create a new uh, null object, which is here. And I'm gonna edit target. 
uh, make sure on the null one selected click OK and then just apply it X and Y click OK okay so now what we've got is a loads of keyframes with this track point here attached to it so that will always sort of stay there now guys what we've got to figure out is what we want to add to this scene so I'm just going to zoom back out here and I may add something out of Element 3D so let's go to new uh, solid uh, let's make it console let's click OK uh, let's go to effects uh, let's go to video copilot and let's go to element 3d and let's find something in element 3d we can add to our scene we might even put a chopper on top of there let's see what we've got here let's go jet strike fun um, let's see what we've got here we can add on top of this so something fun Okay, so let's get this bad boy here and this looks okay and let's turn on the um, environment and let's go to the environment maps um, select on that and let's select uh, say greenhouse because obviously there's um, woods uh, so it's on a mountain and let's just click OK so we can add that to our scene here and let's bring down the um, landing gear so we've got our wheels down and what we're going to do is let's just shrink this and let's connect our, our element 3D layer to our null object here now let's open our null object and let's go to position so now because we've got a null object connected um, this should move with our null so let's get um, for instance let's go new camera uh, let's just click OK with that and let's just get a camera tool and rotate this plane up let's just bring it so it's sitting on top um, of our rock here as you can see and let's try it okay so as you can see now um, our objects moving and it's um, attached to our null object so our plane or our jet looks like it's actually just sitting on that rock and because we added the rotation and the scale obviously we may have to fix that because you see the way that jerks like that that's not a problem we can fix that um, it looks pretty pretty cool so as you can see our jet uh, basically is attached to that null object and it looks pretty pretty cool so now what we can do is we can color correct this obviously if we go to effects and let's go to uh, color correction let's go to CC curves um, and we can sort of play around with the look of our jet so it sort of matches our scene so you can make it a little bit brighter I suppose and then what we can do we can go to our uh, jet strike layer and we can go to effects and we can go to uh, color correction and we can go to photo filter and that should match it up with our scene so it doesn't look too bad at all so as you can see you know we can sort of play around with that jumping is this is where the camera track is um, just basically starting so I can sort of bring this here um, and just trim it to trim comp to work area basically just so we can get rid of that crap like so and if we play back now we've got a really nice tracked uh, plane um, on top of our rocks in our scene like so so that don't look too bad at all now there's another tip you can do right if we zoom if we create a new solid yeah uh, make it comp size click OK all right so it's all black then what we're gonna do is we are gonna press with this um, selected obviously remember to name them go transform and then we're gonna bring the opacity down on that just enough so we can see our jet layer okay and then what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna get my pen tool and zoom in here all right and then 
I'm simply going to go around this rock here, right? I'm just going to mask around this rock here. I'm not going to touch the plane, I'm going to go below the plane, just around here, right? So, it's not going to be perfect, guys. Right. Bosh, and I'm going to leave it like that, yeah? But what we're going to do is we're going to bring our opacity back up so it's black, yeah? And then we're going to close that and we're going to click on this and we're going to hit F on the cable. And I'm just going to feather that out, yeah? I'm just going to feather it out ever so slightly if we hide this now. Now what we've got is basically a really nice uh, little shadow um, that we've created of the plane. Um, you can sort of bring it a little bit down and it just gives it some depth it just looks like there's shadows there's a shadow underneath the plane but what you could also do is make that a little bit more vibrant and you could add another layer to that so what you can do is if we close this if we close this and we create a new another new solid yeah and make that black as well yeah remember to title these because I'm going to title in them at the moment so actually let's rename this wheel there we go. Sorry, it's terrible. Okay, so let's go wheels on that, and then we're going to do the same. So we're going to open this up, guys. Go transform, and we're going to bring the opacity down, touch, and then simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom right in, all right, and I'm going to get me pen tool, and I'm just going to go around the wheel. It's not going to affect this wheel because it's part of the black solid, okay? Like that. So let's rename this wheel uh, one, okay? Now bring our opacity all the way up so it's black. Make that 3D layer. Actually, no, let's turn that on. Turn that off 3D layer. All right. If you can't see the thing, just hide that there like that. All right, so. And then let's just get the rotation of that wheel one. And let's just bring this down here. Like so. Let's click out of it so we can see what we're doing. All right, so it's just there. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard for that. I'm just gonna feather that out as well. Not 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 huge, not big, but it just gives you a nice little shadow um, at the back wheel as well. It just adds a little bit more depth to your scene. Um, just makes it look a hell of a lot more smooth, a hell of a lot more better. So let's go back to the uh, first dark solid. Open that up. Um, bring that down. Let's go to because I never labeled them. Right, so let's bring the opacity up just a bit. And maybe feather it down just a touch. But what we need to do is bring this down like this. All right, so feather it up. And let's do some more feathering now. Right, so that looks nice. Now, what you've got to do, which is very, very important, once you've got all these done. Hold shift, highlight these three, which you feathered, and let's parent these to our null. Because remember, these are not attached, yeah? So if you don't attach them, when you move it, the shadow will move independently, independently, sorry, of itself. So it will look stupid, yeah? Because the, this, one, this whole shadow scene will move by itself. But so whatever you attach to you, the effect of your plane, okay, you need to parent it to this null here so it moves basically uh, with the plane. But as you can see, you know, it's a question of just, um, you know, playing around with it, guys. Um, let's bring it up. Oh, that's for our plane. What am I doing? Uh, let's go back to this. It's a question of just playing around with the, you know, the different looks of it um, just to get it, you know, looking. Uh, really nice but as you can see guys that doesn't look too bad at all um, it's just a question of you know grading it afterwards 
um, and going from there. Uh, what you could do, because there's a bit of movement, you can add a bit of uh, uh, motion blur to your uh, jet. So this is the jet here. We can click motion blur here, just add a bit of motion blur, and then make sure um, it's switched on. So when it moves, it's, it just gives it a little bit more um, of a realistic sort of uh, look. So um, I hope you found this tutorial interesting um, and I hope it's helped. Um, as always guys, remember to hit that like button and that subscribe button. Um, and as always guys, I will catch you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.